Lord Jesus before us. Because I can just click on one of these words. Open it up the link for the word and then tag like an online Perseus. Uh, online TLG. Excuse me, online. Oh, yes. So there it is. But that's not the same as a TLG. Excuse me, no, I meant TLG. That's okay, that's okay. I just wanted to be sure. With Dell and Scott. Oh, with Dell and Scott. I use, I use it. You can see here I have like four tabs open to their... For that's, Perseus, too. Right? Yeah, that's Perseus. Oh. Yeah. For their, what do they call it? Greek word study tool. Yeah. I love it. Yep, yep. And I use actually go the other way usually. I'll find, oh, Plato, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll click on the link and go back to the Greek and look at what, right? So, it's really Do you ever do it like thing. this where you, you search the word in the text? Search the word? Like this. The... Like I just showed you. <laughs> Uh, maybe you didn't see that. Oh, sorry. Well, when you search the word... On a particular... Right, this is the... Does it move from one to the next to the next or something? Well, each of these. I can open okay. up, right? Like, ooh. Okay. Open like a new tab. And then what was that? that gets Accessing the, the LSJ that way. Oh, right. No, so I, you get the word open. You get the basic definition. You want to see the paper stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah, I use it like... I use it this way all the time. I don't <laughs> often go from the Greek text. I, unless I'm looking at... Uh, the devil's got translation and it cites a quote, and I want to know what the quote is, how the quote is using it then. Cool. Yeah, I find the TLG. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I understand we're into a question or two. Yeah. Well, we haven't true. departed from this. But we're going to show. So let me read. This is a fun question. How do you know what answers the question? Like, do all all questions have answers? Well, in any case, how can you determine? what adequately answers a question. Okay. Try this. When seeing this cup, what can you say about what is seen? Okay. <coughs> um, I need some answers. Uh, cylind cylindrical. Sir? It's cylindrical. No, you don't see that. No? no. no. I inferred it. Yeah. Okay, good. try it again. What is seeing? No, no, what is seen? Brown. It has a few different colors. Beige, beige, brown, rounded. Is hell. <laughs> I want to know about this, and she's telling me what's holding it. It's brown. No, she said it is held. It, it is held. Held, yeah, passive. Is this the thing that's held, or is this the thing that's holding? Both. <laughs> well, okay, but I, 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 let me get another one. Sure. How about the, the answer? What, what? Socrates, the answer that Socrates gave in the meaning of that it's a shape and pillar. The shape and color. Okay? And color. And, and color. 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 All of it. I like that. <laughs> uh, of course, we have audio problems. <laughs> it's not working? Yeah, it's not working. You're not okay, working. try it again. Look here. What is the art of camouflage? <laughs> to be unseen in the scene. It is to distort the shape of things <clears throat> by the use of color. Agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. So go back to the question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yourself! 
What? When Juan gave his answer, it's not just the shape, it's the shape and color. Uh, would it be both if the problem of camouflage is introduced? Couldn't no. see the shape. So you could just see color. Then it's only color. Ah, all right. Okay, look here. Then all you really see is color. And you know what? Let's throw this out of here. Okay, the only thing you ever see is color. Good, good, good. Say, by the way, if someone were to ask you, uh, I understand you uh, have a faculty for hearing. Uh, what do you hear? Um. I, all right, I'll write that down. Um. You hear vibrations. No. Hey, do you hear vibration? You never hear by vibration. You infer that. So. Hey, why? Because you infer some relationship between vibration and something else. Okay, what, what do you hear? Sound. 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 Ah, thank you. <clears throat> now look here. That's the raw material, is it not? Yes. Now you must have something that you must have something that takes this and does something with it. Yes. Ah, now what? What's that? See, then this is the function of the eye and the way it functions, right? Here clearly, ears, right? And how it functions. But now you, we do something with that, don't we? What do we do? Make it intelligible. We make it intelligible. Somehow we use it. I'd like to know what you do. Mm, to make sense of it. Come on, stay here. <laughs> How do you finally come up with cup? Well, we look at the Would you agree there are a lot of animals that are all over the place? They see it. Do they call it color? Do they call it a cup? Not that we wow. got what do you have to do, do to go from color you have to make a conclusion education come on what he said you have to I said you have to make a conclusion well go ahead how do you do what doing what come on well People told me when I was younger those things are called cups. Mm. And I saw them so many times. <laughs> so now every time I see one, I'm, I instantly know what it is. But, would you agree the first thing you have to do is ignore everything other than this? Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a separation. There has to be a separation. <laughs> Like he's doing something now. Shall we figure it out? <laughs> Come on. Separation. What else? Come on. Would you agree? Unless you can separate this out from the background, you're not going to be dealing with it. All right? So then you have to separate out the what we call the strange thing 
object or we, particular. Because we can see edges. That's another thing we see. Edges. We see edges. We see where the thing stops. Okay. That would be shape, wouldn't it? Edges is the shape. Right? Mm -hmm. We're different colors. So how do you go from come on. From collar to cup. Don't we do parts to whole or parts to whole or proportion? What one? I said don't we do parts to don't we make distinctions like a part to whole maybe or a proportion, the thing to its background? Yeah, and I think, hey, there's something I can put something I want to drink in. <laughs> some kind of a... A drink. I can put some liquid in there that's going to hold it, and then I can drink it. Is that mine, or am I rushing ahead? Say, so, when is a house a house? Hmm. When is a house a house? <clears throat> when you can live in it. When you can live in it. Mm. Can everybody hear? No. no. <laughs> when do you buy a when do you have a house? When it functions if it's as going a, to be yours. Maybe when it functions as a house for you when you live in it. Uh, when you <laughs> get the keys. Hey. <laughs> Is that right? Until you get the keys, it's not your house. That's right. You can't it's get not in. Our house. Yep. Right. Mm. So look here, do the same thing with the cup. Hmm. Is it only if you know how to use it hmm. that you now separate that use from other uses? Hmm. Hmm. I think so. Don't you have to ignore what you see and start applying what you think about it at a certain point? Then how does a kid come up with the idea of cup? Dave, what was your answer? I missed it. I don't have an answer to that one. Ah. What was that? No, no. I'm, I wanted to hear Dave's the last two question and response. It, well, it's it just what everybody else is saying. Told or you're to do something. Oh. But at that point, you're not looking at the cup anymore, you're looking at teaching. Does it depend upon its function? How you use it? Yeah, yeah I would say that's when a kid who hasn't, ha that's when a kid gets it when they actually use it. Yep. Right, that's it's right. not a cup unless you drink it, drink from it. Otherwise, it's just an ornament. Just an ornament. But you oh. can put Cheerios in there. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Not a cup then, maybe. More like a bowl. Function, function, function. function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use. The way it functions repeatedly, do you put, do you put the name on a repeated function? Mm -hmm. And isolate it from other things that may function in a similar way? Mm -hmm. Spoon. What's the difference between a spoon and a cup? Hmm. They're both <laughs> capable of carrying something. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah. They don't work. It, hmm. Well, that's changed the name. This is a spoon, and the other is a cup. Yeah, Come on, what's wrong? Well, you don't drink coffee with a spoon. Pardon? You don't drink coffee with a spoon. You drink it in a cup. But is that just habit? <laughs> it's a um, Cultural. I used to try to drink my hot chocolate with a spoon, and I tried to drink the whole thing with just my spoon, and it got so boring. It gets <laughs> so boring. I finally so said, like, I'm just drinking it with a cup. Boy, that's it. Yeah. We're against boring. <laughs> yes, good. Okay, look. Try it again. Look here. Why are we doing this? <clears throat> hmm. We're activating. We're activating the mind there. When you're trying to answer this question, is it possible that you may be considering as if it should resemble a cup? 
or anything you see? Yeah, we should be able to apply the same degree of rationality in our description of the cup. Which is why you'll never get close to understanding what it is that's seeing and hearing and thinking. Really? Why? We can't ask the, what is the power? Let's try it. Oh, okay. Well, no, that's the issue. What if this way of operating, it, suppose that builds up our expectations when we try to answer this question? Oh, no shape. No shape. <laughs> no color. No sound. No color. Hmm. No color. Function? Now there you go. You oh, now we can get bring the eye that. back in. You can do function. Now wait a while. Now we got to wonder about what's functioning. What, when it functions, what its function is. Look here. Is it possible that you're able to identify anything that functions in any way in which it functions? Yes. That's all. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, sir. Yes. There should be. Well, then you should know whether or not the cell functions in some way. I was still wondering about that question, whether it's possible to, possible to identify whether to see how something functions. This, you know, this is going to leave us with the usual issue of what does Brad think? <laughs> which Brad? No. Which Brad? Yeah, which Brad? <laughs> we got two Brad. <laughs> How does the cell function? Look here. I just want to know if our mm -hmm. expectation for naming things and understanding things in the visual world is predisposing our way of trying to understand this question. If it does, then what are you going to be looking for? All the things it's not. He said it. Something. Come on. There has to be something there that you can see or hear that you can attribute to whatever it is that's watching. Uh -uh. But suppose it doesn't function that way. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Oh, yeah, we do. I yeah, don't know. We, we don't know. Gonna say uh, so. Please say we do. Well, we know that. You mean you don't have an answer? Well, I don't know. It seems like we've jumped to the self, and I. We did jump. Um, I mean, are you saying it's a self that sees, hears, and things? <laughs> Come on now, say it again. Watch. Are you saying that it is the self that sees, hears? It was your question. Come on. Oh. Don't put it on me. I know well, it's Pierre the innocent. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> you said self. Go on, good try. Do it again. Go on. How did we get to the self? I don't know. Uh, you if don't. you don't know how to get to the self, you'll never discover it. Hmm. If you are anticipating answers that belong in the realm of the phenomenal world through mm -hmm. sight, hearing, and sense experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, look here. Try this. <laughs> Hate to put down a cup, cup of coffee, but... <laughs> what is hearing? Look here. What is hearing? Do you expect it to be a sound? What is hearing? Would you expect mm. what is hearing to be a sound? No. No. Mm -hmm. No. No? Not hearing. Well, then you better not be listening to try to discover what's hearing. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you should forget about it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, uh, how are you going to discover it? Mm. it? It must have some mark, then you can see it. Agree? I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be 
be visible. Right? It's got to be visible, yeah. Right. It must have some mark. You're back over there, Julie. But to see it? No, it's markless. What? No, we were rejecting. <laughs> Why? That it has marks. Why? Because we didn't see any. <laughs> yes. What? Because we didn't see any when we were looking for what is it that sees. We saw no marks. Continually. Yeah. Good. Like, Come on. Continued not to see any marks. Yeah. To where the uh, or hear any numbers sounds. are coming from. But um, wouldn't you expect, like, it, some people hear the numbers, right? They hear one, two, three. They don't see one, two, three. And so... Uh, some it, people see it but not hear it. That's Go right. ahead. That's right. So my, no, my question actually was you were asking whether you expected what is it that hears to be a sound. Aren't, wouldn't the analogy rather say that it would be the ear, so to speak, the psychic ear <laughs> that you're looking for? Okay, look, hold on. <laughs> or psychic would you agree? Eye? Would you agree that if you're trying to discover what hears by listening to see if it makes a sound, if it does make a sound, what must you ask? What's hearing that? <clears throat> What's hearing that? What's hearing the sound? Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Now apply it to the cup. Okay, come on. If you want to know what sees, would you agree anything that you're looking at, there must be something you see that has a color or form or shape? Yep. Well then, if you're intent on this question, uh, what is it that sees, and you spot it, <laughs> uh -oh. got a particular color and mark, wouldn't you feel pleased? No. Why not? <laughs> we did that well. <laughs> Why not? Because <laughs> you still have to ask what's seeing that. Oh, <laughs> then you're not going to then look for a mark about what sin. Well, how else can you Is see that, that correct? No. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you're not going to listen to see if it makes a sound. Mm -mm. I'm not going to ask any Watch of those questions. Watch it now. <laughs> you're not going to ask any of those questions? Heck no. Hmm. Why would you ask? Uh, thanks. Mm. Thanks. Mm. Mm. Same thing. What do you mean, same thing? I'm not going to look for any particular thought to answer the question, what is thinking? Because? Because those come and go, and even if I found that thought, I'd still have to say, what is looking at the what thought? Is thinking okay. the thought. Or what is thinking the thought? Uh, right in, right, yeah, the latter part? Mm -hmm. What is thinking the thought? Right. Is that equally true? Also, so if you're going to try to answer this question, you're not going to wait for a thought to come and tell you what it is. Why not? Because <laughs> you, 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 you want the thinker, not the thought. You want, yeah. <laughs> you want to know what's thinking. What is that? And if you get a thought, that's something thinking. Yep. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> hey, got another question. See, in good old Platonic thought or normal thought, this is called the function of the soul. The soul then organizes material that comes through the senses and allows us to put any names on things and judge their particular shape. But that's the function of the soul, right? What does it do? It takes the data from the senses and organizes it. You know what you're telling me now? It looks like you better not use the function of the soul to try to answer that question. <sighs> well, that's it. Then there's no way to know it. <laughs> so, let's go home. <laughs>
We are home. Oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's another way of coming to grips with curious things. See, the soul does one other thing. It also brings into a unity. That's the key part of it. It brings into a unity the particular things you experience. Then you can name them, then you can talk about them, then you can draw them. And Is there something else that we use to... Uh, No? Huh. Okay, let me try this one. Is there something else that we need to know? Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay, it's going to go up. <laughs> Robert, do you know the name of the cell? Uh. Pull it up. No, I don't want to Ah, thank you. Julie, the you name is know, the seminar has a name. Uh, well, it's Either just the philosophy of the self. self. Thank you. So, um, suppose I have a one of these things called problems. And I'm interested in a kind of a problem. I want to know whether I'm going to be using the activity of the soul or something else. Mm. Um, oh, it's a. Is there such a thing as a um, problem in uh, music? Uh, geometry, mathematics, arithmetic, or uh, higher. Why are why do we study problems in these areas? Why are problems? Why do problems exist in these areas? And what does it take to solve them? Uh, sure. Miss? Miss? Uh, Gina. <laughs> uh, are you into geometry? Yeah. Oh, what's the first proposition in Euclid? To construct an equilateral equilateral triangle on a... To construct um, an equilateral? What does that mean? All the sides are equal. Oh, 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 oh. What did he say? On a given finite three line. Well, that's it. He, he stopped me. That's not the way you do it? No. He, the whole of it is to construct an equilateral triangle on a given straight line. Finite. Finite straight line. Huh. Wait a minute. So you have to start over. If you want to... Watch that. That's right. If you want to prove that this is an equilateral triangle, Hmm. What do we mean by proof? Mm -hmm. Because a proof is a solution to a problem. Hmm. Hmm. Would you agree somehow some people come along and say, well, I'll tell you what, if you take a straight line and you anchor one end of it and sweep out an arc, end up with a circle. Oh, by the way, if you anchor this part and sweep this out, you end up with another circle. Oh, and if you find out where they're joined and draw a straight line between each of these points, Then uh, line AB should be equal to BC and BC equal to CA. Now, how can you prove that?
Oh, suppose someone comes along and says, hey, uh, I think I got one. Would you agree that any circle, no matter what size you draw, there's always from the center of the circle to the circumference, if you create straight lines, they're always equal to one another. No. No matter how big? Yeah. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I drew a circle here. Therefore, this line is a radius. Oh, it's also, this is a radius too, isn't it? Well then, radii in the same circle are equal. <coughs> oh, there's another circle. And this is a radii going this way. And going this way. Ah, therefore these two are equal. So you've got this is equal to this, this is equal to this, but uh, how do you get them to equal to one another? All you got is, all you've done is figured out in each circle there are two lines that are equal to one another, but how can you prove that uh, they are all equal to one another? You would say, thank you for asking me? <laughs> um, yeah, there's a axiom. They call them axioms. Please names don't, equal don't to call this. things names. <laughs> well, that's the name they put on it. <laughs> Anybody know what an ax is? <laughs> yeah, what do you call it again? Axiom. That's where we all act together. Oh, we all act together. <laughs> That's an axiom. Yeah. What the hell? You mean you can... <laughs> how can you show they're all equal to one another? Well, there's a principle in nature that says things which are equal to the same thing, things are also equal to each other. Oh! Wait a minute. Then, if these two things are equal to the same thing, they must be... How can you prove that? Can't prove the axiom? You can't. I have no idea. Well, then you don't have a proof. Oh. <laughs> no, the, they're take, they're take, aren't they self-evident? They're taken to be... They are. Not, don't it's fall for self-evident self crap. So you don't need to prove it. <laughs> he brought the self in. Uh-oh. <laughs> Look here. Someone is saying, I know the answer. If things are equal to the same thing, they're equal to one another. I ask, how do you know that's true? How do you know the axiom is true? Are you going to call it that name again? Yes. <laughs> what does that do? Call that an axiom? Well, it just gives a name to what you're talking about. So we can call it non-undemonstrable <laughs> principles used in proof. How about that? A little bit longer. You mean, it has a certain reason. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me it's a non that you can't proof. prove this without believing something you can't prove? Yes. That's right. So they would say... Can't subject well, then to. geometry is phony. Yeah. Whoa. If it all builds on this, it's all it's phony. It's they don't have any proof. <laughs> they jump into the bandwagon of belief. In a very high way, in a trustworthy way. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. print, what do you call it? Print what? In a high... In print a, principle? Yeah. What's that? Trustworthy, you say. In a trustworthy way. Isn't you mean just, you gotta just, you gotta just, jump to a yeah. principle? Yep. What the hell does that mean? Would that make it uh, in incomplete, or because it doesn't have, or is it inconsistent? Because one of that the principles it relies on can't be shown. No, well, I was here. never mind. Never mind. Different. Look question. here. Our colleague said that. Things it's equal to the same thing or equal to one another is a principle. Yep. So what? Uh, Does that mean to go along with this as a proof you have to believe in a higher principle for this to be true? The Church of Euclid. 
and it's trustworthy. It's a trustworthy principle. It's not just something. Well, that, that just it, means a lot of people find it useful. What makes it trustworthy is that everybody will hold the same idea. It'll be, it'll ring in everybody's soul in the same way. But so sir, religion. would plurality determine truth? <laughs> Since everybody agrees with it, no, I mean, if you get a class of morons and they all agree to the same thing, it doesn't make an eternal truth. But but it'll make sense no matter what. It'll always make sense that things which are equal to the same thing okay, will equal on. to one another, and that will stand for everybody all the time. It'll never change. Let's try this. Look here. You use one expression. Hmm. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you. Come on now, right now. Does it make sense to assume there is this kind of thing which everybody agrees to but no one can prove? Yeah. And you have to accept that? Should sure. you call this a proof? Yeah. I can live with it. <laughs> Does it make sense? Then I want to know, look here. If you make this step, are you using uh, the principles of sight? Hmm, no. Well, yes and no. Are you using a function of the soul? Yes. Yeah. yeah, no. Well, then you should be able to see it, hear it, confirm it in terms of particular. <laughs> Is this step creating the beginning of a whole system? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me you have to jump to this? And you feel secure about this enough to say, yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. Even though you know you do not have a legitimate proof for the solution of this problem. True. So look here, if you're willing to say this, how are you making this judgment right now, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it makes sense to say things equal to the same thing or equal to one another. What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing in your mind? Come on. Tell me. Picture it. Okay? Tell me. Take a few minutes out. What are you doing as you're playing with that idea? I'm putting them equal to the same thing. You're creating thing a symmetry. Or equal to, okay? Do it for a minute or two. Okay? Uh, miss, are you going for coffee? Yeah, do you want something in that cup? Well, I just have an empty cup. <laughs> it's perfect. Can you fill it? Yeah. Can you put it in the cup? I hope so. From the bottom up? I'm going to try. Not in her pocket? <laughs> I hope so. Because it'd be trouble drinking it out of her pocket. Yeah, not to mention. So we create a cup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. What did you do? Do you have a moment to do it? What are you doing when you're saying that statement is true? Things equal to the same thing or equal to one another. Are you conning yourself? Yeah, go ahead. Did you say conning? Yes, he said conning. I want to know, see, here's where we're going. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, what faculty are you using at that point when you're making that judgment? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's true because it's something you see or that you've heard? What's going on in your mind? Mm -hmm. Pardon me? A mathematical equation. Do it again. A mathematical equation. Oh. Come on, what do you think of that? Mm -hmm. What do I think of that? Hmm? 
Which one? Yes, which one? Come on. Do you have do you have a good way? On each side. Well, they have to be even on each side. Well, I mean, I came up. So my answer is, my mind was coming up with examples, right? So either I started to think about pens that are equal to the same other pen, therefore they're equal to another. And then I went with a mathematical equation that uh, 4 and 2 plus 2 are both equal to 3 plus 1, therefore they're equal to each other. So I came up with examples. That's what my mind was doing. <laughs> Uh, what are you doing with this? What am I doing? Yeah. I'm putting two things together. Well, then you have 11. <laughs> 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 right. So it depends how you put them together. <laughs> what are you doing if you go to here? Hey, each one of them is going to remain the same as it is. But it's going to become different simply because you do this. Uh, talk about that. What do you do? Well, yeah, what does that mean? If I were to go out on a date by myself, it would be a lot different than if I went with someone else, even though we both remain the same. See, look at the same issue. This issue is the same as this one. <laughs> Things equal to the same thing are equal to one another. Huh. You'll never get two. That's right. Yeah. All you get is another one. You wouldn't use that principle there. Things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. You wouldn't use that principle right there. You mean you one need another one. principle to do this? Exactly. Because if you say the same thing is true, that things equal to the same thing are one another, this is equal to this. Therefore, they're equal to one another. You never get two. You need another you one. You need a different principle completely. That's not, that's not what you should No, see, then you're going for some other point to make addition. Some, you're going for some other principle. Mm -hmm. What is this movement to principles? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's doing it? Mind. Let me suggest one word. <sighs> it's the beginning of the use of intelligence. intelligence. Oh, okay. It's the use of the intellect. It presupposes <laughs> there's such a thing as the intellect. It's doing something. And what it's doing is Is intellecting made up a word, right? That means for someone to go for this principle, they're doing something really remarkable. They're waking up a different kind of mental functioning. Because if you can't go along with it, you can't do this any further. It's ended. Mm -hmm. So your own intellectual development is blocked if you can't make a jump to that principle. When you're doing it yourselves, when I ask you to do it yourself, what are you doing? Or maybe like are you mind. thinking? Mm -hmm. No. All the thinking in the world won't get you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? You either see it or you don't see it. Mm -hmm. You either see it or you don't see it. Ah, that's the mark of using the intellect. When it is intellecting, you gain the principle, the object of 
the intelligible. Therefore, this becomes the intelligible. And therefore, when the intellect is intellecting the intelligible, it gains intelligence. Ah, wait a minute. Let's now see if we can get over here. See? Ah, this is really peculiar. Ah. Hmm. Now look here. Watch on. What is the relationship between these three things for an essence and this rational process of thinking? You reach thinking because you know how to what's called think. You use this think as a function, thinking, and then you gain a conclusion or a thought. But it's a higher order, isn't it? You're doing something different. There is a cup. Oh, where is it? It's on the table. Oh, I got to figure out. There's a table. Yeah, there's a table. There's something that has a curious shape. What did you call it again? Oh, in my language, we don't call it that. Well, that names change. Use the word cup when you're talking to me. It's a cup. Mm. Right? Now, what am I doing? Well, all agree, we agree if we can use this kind of language to come to this kind of conclusion about this object. No appeal, no appeal to principles. But when I want to get into problems, I have to do something different. I have to go to that which appeals to principles. How do you do that? What does that mean? It means that you're using the intellect and exercising it, and you know what's at stake, because you ain't got any evidence that this is true, nor can you have any. Hmm. So, yeah, that's true. Oh, what makes it true? Things equal to the same thing or to one another. Now I can build the whole system of geometry out of that. Therefore, let me ask you one thing, all right? You just went through this with me. What was it like when you saw the solution? Mm. Mm. That's all. Got my question? For those of you who went along through the steps, what was it like when you saw the, the conclusion? Did you have to see it? Wait a minute, we're not using the eyes. <coughs> Did you see it? Well, you know, I thought I didn't see it clearly enough because I, I duplicated it on my paper because I wanted to know well, what exactly am I seeing here because I was so certain. But you are seeing something. Yeah. Is it through the eyes that you're seeing? No, it's a, it's a certain... There's some other kind of seeing that allows you to see the truth of a principle. Yeah. Oh! The truth of the principle. Oh! Oh, that's curious. So therefore, the intellect is like... Hey, now we have another level. The eye seed is going through an activity of seeing so that the object can be seen. Same, look here. Same function on a higher level, on a higher level. Therefore, on the level of sensation, 
the saying one, two, three. On the level of thinking, one, two, three. On the level of intellect, one, two, three. Same thing. I, I, I. Different kinds of eyes, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So here's your challenge, you see. If you decide to answer that question, and you're going to look for something that you can see that is seeing, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. If you're trying to solve it by thinking, all you'll have is a thought. You won't know what it is that's seeing. Wait a minute. Now you're going to intellect. Hopefully. So you tell me, what was it like for you to see this solution? What did it do to you? Okay, I need a couple of hands. Uh, aha! A little bit, of, uh, like a little light. Look here. A little mm -hmm. Insight. The aha. Mm -hmm. Is that the mark of reaching and moving in the realm of principles? Yes. Hmm. Then you're going to have to get an insight into this. On the level of insight, not using sensation or reasoning as thinking, but you now have to move to a higher level called intellect. Hmm. Aha! <laughs> well, what's that? And that would be that would be on the level of beholding. Pardon me. That would be on the level of beholding. Beholding. Let's hope so. Yes, beholding. That's ideas then. No. Yes. Ideas. That's the realm of idea, right? Not a concept, right? That's the big difference. Ah. That's a big difference. What's, yeah. Could you explain how thinking is different from intellect? Thinking is different from? Intellecting. Sure. <coughs> <laughs> thinking will only get you to an insoluble problem. <laughs> You'll never be able to, to walk away thinking you know this if you can't go to this level. Mm -hmm. Thinking is impossible to solve problems of an intellectual order within their own scope. You have to go to a principle. That step intellect function. Hold it. Is that, is intellecting then what gets us out of the problem of Goodall's incompleteness? The is, incompleteness theorem that you It gets have? us out of the realm of? The, of Goodall's incompleteness yes, problem. Doesn't it? That's what it does. Interesting. So now if we go back to this exercise, how are you going to approach it? What um, is it? I have a See, is that a real question, first of all? Come on. Sure. Is that a worthwhile question? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's puzzling. Because I thought I had an answer given what Gina and I were talking about and, and Juliet earlier, like that having the question itself raises a state of mind. See, so, but I don't know how that fits into what you're no, doing. No, no, that's absolutely right. See, the right use of the word question is you are on the activity of questing. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't you yeah, find out what that see. is after you get anything you see, hear, or think? Yes. In order to get police get a leg? After. Yeah. Mm. Right, you have to pull away from all of that. And yet you still have That's the question. That's what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm.
but, but when I saw the math problem, it seemed like right, natural, and indisputable. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Well, I was, the answer to the geometry no, question. See, it's, mm. it's only indisputable if you accept the truth of that principle. Things uh, equal to the same thing or equal to one another. But that has never been proven. No one has ever come up with a rational argument to defend that idea. Well, what do you mean? I was more thinking about how that was the quality of the insight I had, not the quality of the proof that the insight was right, natural, and indisputable. Yes, you're absolutely right. We hope it's true. <laughs> we hope it's true, but we'll never know whether it is true or not. Oh, wow. Therefore, the idea of truth has to be an entirely different realm. Right. right. Yes. Because sometimes we use that principle, we say, well, a friend of my friend is my friend, right? I don't say that. But that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I've tried it. It doesn't always work. No, it doesn't always work. <laughs> See? <laughs> Okay. All that? That's cute. Uh, you went to the idea of principle and you gain an insight. But then you said something <coughs> about looking at insight and louder, there you, uh, you talked about insight and you stopped there and then you mm -hmm. jumped to idea. How did you move from getting the principle? Is that is the principle which we're talking about things equal to the same thing or equal to one another? That's what we have as a principle. Is that considered an idea, or is there something else that's considered an idea? That's the beginning of an idea. Okay, then how do you get from... Wait a minute. Okay. You have to remember the last point we made. Yes, that... Which was that when you involve yourself on the level of principles, you never know whether they are true. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Would that stand for ideas? Yes. Hmm. Yes. That's necessarily like ask many. Perhaps I'll make a jump just for a moment. <clears throat> Suppose for the moment we have here <laughs> all the works we would be willing to call a part of a wisdom tradition. Think of any tradition that comes to your mind. Is it not likely that each tradition may have an aspect of itself which you might call wisdom? Hindus, Buddhists, Christians, Jews, etc., etc. Agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Suppose there is one that is complete. What does that mean? That means it can take the highest principle and show rationally the very nature of what it is show how it functions on the highest level
<coughs> show how it manifests itself in time. <laughs> Shows how its image functions shows how the highest is totally isolated from all else. And then <clears throat> it's able to show how if you deny any of these it necessarily would show its necessity. Hmm. So if you were to deny, look here, the, the, the denial of all of those is so executed that it would show the necessity of it if you were to deny it. Would you agree this would be a rather interesting system to get into? Yes, I think we Completely may. Completely rational from beginning to end? I think you've been... Suppose the author of this starts it off with one sacred word. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. The whole thing is repeated. If, 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 if. Throughout all of these. <clears throat> Why if? <clears throat> it is totally rational. It rests upon principles. Each of the principles can be shown to have a rational foundation. Hey, it ain't knowledge. Yet it's part of a wisdom tradition. Perhaps the highest. You're talking about the Parmenides? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I go, it, it goes on saying. Why the if? Because if you master it, if you come to understand it, so what? Right. <laughs> you don't know it's true. Right. Unless you do something with it to discover mm. if it is true. Mm. Mm. Okay, you do this. What do you do with that? That step oh. is the same step as this <laughs> right here. Uh, same step as what? Same step as contemplating right that. Here. Same thing. Hmm. Therefore, sure. wouldn't you agree the most important thing to know is when to take a break? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Now, what is it that knows it's time to take a break? What is it that knows that? To know it's true. Say it again. Come on. What is it that knows it's time to take a break? Right. Bringing us back. I know. Yeah. I look at Nancy. 
Oh, okay, let's check the brain. Come on. Okay, well, <laughs> I had to take off the second shelf. I mean, my refrigerator really needed to clean. So now all that stuff that was on the shelf, I either have to throw it away or put it back in. And I have to clean the shelf. So it's Announcements. First one. Regina. Um, stand up, stand up. The la <clears throat> just a, this is just a, a request. Last seminar, I had two large Pyrex dishes to put that quiche in, and I can't buy mine. So I wondered if anybody here may have taken them home or something. That was all. That's okay. all my, so if they did, please. Otherwise, I don't know what and happened. Could I make an announcement? This is, this is food related, but it has to do with the soup that I'm bringing. Rather than make a large note and try, or try to run around telling everybody, it's, it's what's called a detox soup, and it's made with sweet potatoes and carrots and parsnip and turmeric and ginger, good things for you. And they're all organic. And I just want to let everybody know that, so you should eat them. <laughs> That's the conclusion. Good. Um, all right. We're, Hold it. Um, we would like to take a picture before lunchtime because Julie Grable is going to leave us so we can all be yes. smart. So, right, oh, right thank you. Right after this, we run out. Yeah. <laughs> Stay right here. Stay right here. Right here. Right here. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Third announcement. We all know the Balboas have done some great work that has helped us all. Yes. Woo! Yes. Woo! Here's the kicker. A few minutes ago, he came up with a book, and he said, "Look what I just got." from another benefactor, <laughs> Julie Pastel. In it, our good friend, Juan, said, uh, by the way, Let's see. don't you find this a rather curious quote? Mm. And I look at it, and it's perfect. Here's a quote. This is one of the great discoveries, the papyri of the Jaravani, which is the first public record of a non-so-called philosopher, uh, an educated average Greek at the time. So the first, this is really the first document we have of someone engaging the intellectual life of their own their own people, the Greeks, it's, it's now, I guess. and he's writing and reflecting upon what's going on around in his actual. It's a great, great piece of work. Here's the quote. He quotes Heraclitus. This common thing, you see, things equal to the same thing or equal to one another, that principle, what does that do? Here's the quote. It overturns what is private. Oh. <laughs> so if you can't go to the principle, you can never accept this as being possibly true. Mm. Therefore, the jump to principles is to get out of your private world mm -hmm. and enter into the intellectual life of your people who generate things like this. And that's what we have, thank goodness, the residue of the Greek Empire. So again, thank you. Okay. Now we go back. All set? So is that your book? Yes, she gave it, I gave it to one. The publisher oh. Going to a principle overcomes the private. You're then having to step out of your own private existence and go for something common. You're now going to move into the realm of principles. What is it like? Remember, I asked you, what is it like when you play with this principle, being people to the same Jeff said, aha, insight. That's the mark of entering into the realm of the mind. Now, why is this an important Greek word? 
It's not English, it's Greek. Edos, right? Mm. It means to be whole. Literally, it means to be whole. When you're considering these kinds of principles, you're beholding. You're using the intellect, and you're now leaving the private, secular world, and you're now going for something independent of yourself, which may be true, you're going to assume it's true, but you know what? Here is one of the great perfect works. How does it begin? If you have to behold it as being true, you have to do something with it. Otherwise, it's only an object of reflection. Right? What does that mean? That means you're going from the intellect to something very strange. Intellect needs something, and it's not often mentioned, but we'll do it today. It needs truth. Because no matter what kind of an intellectual system you have, you'll never know whether it is true unless you do something with it yourself. Yeah. Then it's your it's not your truth because you left the private realm by going for principles. Therefore you're mm. entering into the intellectual life of mankind. Mm. A noble game. So now we go back. <clears throat> what do you need to do to make it yourself? Let me ask you to do something now, rather curiously. Let's do some counting. <laughs> Let's do some counting. Get ready. Starting at 11. Now, it's often good to have an eraser in case you make a mistake. Okay. Julie's going to count to okay. 11 this time. Let's try it. As you visualize or hear the numbers from one to ten, slowly be attentive. And now you're asking, where do they come from? Did you make them? <clears throat> Did you fabricate them? How did you get them? Where do they come from? Can you see, possibly, their origin? Mm. Take a look. Ah, oh, where do they go? See where they disappear or go. Be attentive. Where do the numbers come from? Where do they go? What is watching? Is there anything watching? But are you not aware of them? Mm -hmm. What's aware of them? From what vantage point is it watching?
what is watching. Be attentive. What are you doing when you're doing this? You're watching. What's watching? Where do the numbers come from? Where do they go? Where do the numbers come from? What's watching? Is there anything watching? But you are aware of it. What's aware of it? Is it worth knowing? as you're watching the numbers. <clears throat> How is it they come? Did you will it? Are you aware of a will? Or are you watching the consequences of a will? Did you will the numbers? Is that all you need? What is obeying the will? Okay, come back together. <clears throat> What's the difference <clears throat> between yesterday, when you did it, and today, now? What's the difference? <clears throat> yes, thank you for volunteering. Um, I wasn't trying to necessarily pay attention to the number. Do you hear that? They don't hear over there. They're throwing their hands up in the air. <laughs> Got it. I wasn't trying to necessarily pay attention to the number because I felt like um, by doing that, it wouldn't answer the question. Mm, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Barbara, go ahead. Uh, I saw your hand move. <laughs> um, yeah, there was, I found it more, more interesting. But um, I also noticed that my numbers were connected with like my heartbeat, mm -hmm. physiological. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I tried to move them away because mm -hmm. I felt like I'd get a better look at them if mm -hmm. I moved them away from that mm -hmm. automatic. And so I was lo looking for this. Those were great questions, right? Where do they come from? And especially... Well, you know, what is generating them in a way? I'm rephrasing it. But I didn't come up with any answers. It just, it actually mm -hmm. was to move the site of the number generation away from my physiology by, I 
putting it out mm. above my head, really, from I, what I would call... But there was something head. that was doing it. There was something that was doing it, yeah. And it was, it was intensified no. by removing it from no. that. So. Yeah, go ahead, bro. <clears throat> He's waving his hand back there. Mm. <clears throat> it was quieter. It was quieter, more still mm. today than yesterday. Remember the question: What's the difference? Mm -hmm. That was the difference. Yeah. It was quieter than yesterday, and more still, more settled. <clears throat> I, I, I had a, well, one of the things that came was getting out of the way of myself to see myself. You're getting out of the way of yourself so you can see myself. See what I'm asking you to do? Make a comparison. <clears throat> okay. Well, I was trying to let go of any expectations. Like yesterday I had expectations of the form in which it would arrive. An answer. Mm. Right? And I had like a way <clears throat> of you described it as um, looking for it as if you were looking for an object of sight or looking for it like you would look, listen for an object of hearing. And in that sense, it was kind of interesting because when I considered that that was the case, it had to be the case, then it was freeing. And for me, it intensified the whole procedure, the whole thing. So, watch. Hmm. Hmm. This morning we've had a discussion about some curious things. Are you saying <clears throat> that that gave you hmm. a three-way comparison? That something happened as hmm. a result of our discussion, reflection? True, that's true. Yes, it is. On your experience? How the hell did that do? How, how did that happen? What's doing that? Yeah. If there is a difference through this discussion, this reflection, how is it possible that this curious question as a result of this reflection and discussion goes through changes. And yet you still have the question in a new way. Mm -hmm. I'd say too that when you focused our attention, when you focused our attention on the aha, right, on uh, the way we have of grasping a common notion, that that gave a doorway into the realm, or a way of, a way of perceiving the transition into the realm of the intellect, intellecting, right? Is that clear? Uh, yes. Mm. Ah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so we all had some moment where when you ask us to reflect on what it was like seeing that about the common notion, and when you do that, then it was like I focused on a different way of mm. uh, functioning. Yes. Yes. So then, whatever this did, it changed your experience. Yes. Wow. Yeah, from... What did that? Yeah. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. What did that? Mm-hmm. 
Is there a change? Yes. What did the change? The discussion? You're reflecting, you're joining in and reflecting. You could be here and say, the hell with it, I'll let other people do it. <laughs> then you're witnessing it, but you're not in it. Yeah, that's the difference. That's the difference. <laughs> because yesterday it was mechanical, I'm doing something. Today I was puzzled. I had the question deeper and, and better, and I was holding on to it and playing with it actually. What are the, I was coming up with, hey, different kids have different languages and they call one, two, three, uno, dos. Where does that come from? And what, what is it about a kid that would be able to note that? And what is it about my own thinking right now that is playing with these ideas? Yeah. While you're, while you're counting. Yeah. Yeah. While, <laughs> while I'm counting. And, and is it possible? Yes. Is it possible that you're moving from your private world last night into mm -hmm. now a more Universal. Uh, more universal, universal question on a deeper World. level, mm -hmm. where you're now looking at the aha phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Because you do want to behold what? Mm. <laughs> That's an idea. So it's yeah. not a concept. Yeah. Concepts are empty, oh, true. necessarily. Right. In school, what are we taught? All the vitality of ideas comes from immediate experience. Then when you name it, as you go higher and higher on levels of abstraction, the more empty it becomes and meaningless until finally it's only a name. We're doing the same thing, only we're inverting it. The higher you go on reflections of the principles, uh-oh, it may be more vital and more significant than anything you can experience in the everyday world. <laughs> curious, 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 curious. So let me have a couple of more reflections. Thank you for volunteering. <coughs> Comparison. <clears throat> some things were still the same in terms of like a hand. Yes, yeah, something is still the same. Well, even characteristically, like in the way the numbers came to me in my first initial response, like my <coughs> was the same. But this time was a little bit more playful in terms of engaging in the dynamics of looking and trying to actively discover the question. Answer. Answer what is seen. Yeah, you raised it as a question. I, oh, it's just more enjoying, like, looking, rather than having... Now it's more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. ah. It's true. Like, I was kind of, I relaxed the answer as the, as the end. Okay, look here. <clears throat> Before we leave for a picture... You're going to see, it's obvious. Hmm. Picture! It's time already? It's like it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> Come on up, get a picture. Calm down. May take you a few minutes to calm down. <clears throat> up here. Let's not bother to calm down. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Barbara. Oh. I wore this shirt in honor of where we usually are. Yeah.